investigations. Who committed the crime? We have a few suspects on our list. Russia, Ukraine, the US, along with Norway, Sweden and Denmark, and the non-state pro-Ukrainian group. To get a better understanding of who the real culprit might be, let's look at three M's. Motive, means, and media coverage. Motive is a critical element in solving a case like this. Yes, let's first look at Russia's motive. The first thing we need to know is the pipeline is owned and operated by Nord Stream AG and its majority shareholder is a Russian state-owned company, Gazprom. So if it was then, it would be they destroy something they have spent billions on building. The motive here is not strong. So I will put one star here. What about Ukraine? They seem having a logical potential motive for carrying out the attack. They have rejected the project for years, calling it a national security threat. I will give this motive three stars. How about US and its allies? The US has historically seen the Nord Stream pipeline as an extension of Russian influence over Europe through Germany. For the long run, you simply want to change the structure of energy dependence. You want to depend more on the North American energy platform. Numerous officials in the Biden administration have declared their contempt for the pipelines. January 27, 2022, Under Secretary of State Victoria Newland. And I want to be clear with you today. If Russia invades Ukraine, one way or another, Nord Stream 2 will not move forward. February 7, 2022, shortly before the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Biden told the reporters, There will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. September 28, 2022, shortly after the explosion, former Polish Foreign Minister Roslaw Skorsky tweeted, Thank you, USA. September 30, 2022, the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken called the subtouch. This is also a tremendous opportunity. Another set of data can offer us some more clues. The total U.S. export value for mineral fuels to Europe in 2021 was almost 42 billion. That's the number before explosions. The number more than doubled to over 100 billion in 2022, since Europe could no longer get cheap gas from Russia and instead had to buy gas from the U.S. That's a pretty good deal for the U.S. The needle of suspicion points to Quebono, who benefits most from the attack. The Western media doesn't want to talk about who benefited from the attack, but actors like the New York Times, the Washington Post, Germany's SWR and ARD broadcasters, and Dizide newspaper do want to talk about a pro-Ukrainian group. Let's move on to the next M, memes. According to unverified accounts parroted by numerous Western media outlets, here we have five men and one woman, a captain, two divers, two diving assistants, and a doctor. There is no evidence the Ukrainian government was involved, so they were on their own. The small group rented a yard from a Ukrainian company registered in Poland and used forged passports. It set sail from the northern German port of Rostock on September 6, 2022, and they planted almost half a ton of military-grade explosives 80 meters on the sea. The yard was seen the next day docked at the Danish island of Kristiansø in the Baltic. I have a few questions. The pipes are huge and strong. They are also covered with 3 inches of concrete and around 80 meters under sea. And the subtarge occurred in an area controlled by Denmark. How did the six people carry a half ton of explosives and explode the pipeline without state assistance and not be detected? They are really Superman. And a woman. Award-winning investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch accused the U.S. of carrying out the attack. Last June, the Navy divers, operating under the cover of a widely publicized midsummer NATO exercise known as 
bolt of 2022 planted the remote trigger explosives that three months later. More details are here. On September 26, 2022, a Norwegian naval P-8 surveillance plane made a seemingly routine flight and dropped a sonar buoy. A few hours later, high-power C-4 explosives were triggered and three of the four pipelines were put out of commission. The best diver the U.S. can find is the detailed planning before the operation took place and the back and forth about how and when the operation was carried out. I will give you the search first. We cannot independently verify uh, these claims because both Western media, the poor Ukrainian groups report or Hirsch's report rely completely on anonymous intelligence. But compared with New York Times report, Hirsch had a huge amount of specifics. Behind the contradictory narratives around the Nord Stream explosion, we find the clues to a modern media war. So let's do a data analysis. Two weeks after her story, the New York Times had only mentioned his name in one opinion article denouncing his credibility. But over 380 pieces on how a pro-Ukrainian group blew up the pipelines popped up in just one day, March 9, all over the Western mainstream media. Neither one of those papers mentioned my story. It's been out for a couple of weeks, but I'm getting massacred by calls from overseas on it. But there was a, a, a Security Council meeting about this yesterday. Why did mainstream Western media spend so much coverage on the unverified pro-Ukrainian story and ignore Hirsch's much more detailed one? And they all came out at the same time as if they were a coordinated effort. The media seemed to want its audience to believe their preferred narrative by bombarding their audience 24 and 7. Like what we saw with stories of Chinese blue, even of course Chinese weather blue could threaten US national security. And it's not hard to imagine that a poor Ukrainian group can be created to feed the chosen agenda. If the group is fictional, where does it fit on our chart? Who is the biggest pro Ukrainian group in the world? We stood with the Ukrainian people to tonight. Our support for Ukraine will not waver. NATO will not be divided, and we will not tire.